Hello, welcome back to uh, our week two of the uh, Arctic Sea Ice Outlook for summer of 2017. Here we are in the last week of June, and I wanted to take a look again at uh, the sea ice because it's the melt is really accelerating this past week. Uh, it looked like 2017 was lagging behind other recent years as of last week, and I was even doubtful whether, for example, the Northwest Passage would even become navigable, or whether we would end up in the, uh, the top three melt years for this year. But now, as of this week, uh, you know, things can change pretty quickly this time of year. I think uh, I'm much more confident that the Northwest Passage will open, and number two, that we will end up in the, the bottom three for um, sea ice area. Uh, you know, something sub... 3 million square kilometers, uh, if, if you, like, according to cryosphere today or whatever that, uh, whatever the analogous, uh, product is for that nowadays, I think that's where we're ending up for sure at this point, because, uh, if you just take a look at how things have accelerated, once again, we're going to go clockwise, starting with, uh, the Chukchi Peninsula. And the, the Chanskaya Bay here is really just um, blowing me away how quickly that has disintegrated. Uh, if we go back, here's what it looked like a week ago. And it just about caught up with, uh, with you know, 2016. Uh, but in this week, it has raced ahead and practically melted out in one week. You know, went from this kind of gray, shattered ice, you know, to this uh, in one week. And, you know, a week from now, none of this will be here. This will be all gone. Uh, whereas if you look at 2016, it took a lot longer to, uh, you know, this whole time, uh, clouds are obscuring most of it. But you see, it's not... In 2016, it wasn't really melting that quickly. Look at that. See, it's still mostly, mostly full there in, uh, in 2016. Uh, so that leads me to believe that a lot of this ice might be a lot thinner here this year in 2017. I mean, same thing. Look, you look in the East Siberian Sea. Um, it was just about a week ago when this really started to get a lot of melt ponding. And bam. Not even a week goes by and already starts breaking up very close to the coast. So this is, uh, you know, look at this huge crack over here. So what that tells me is the Laptev cannot be very far behind, especially getting hit from this side by the river outflow uh, and then on this side. So I wouldn't give this ice more than uh, probably another month at most. I'd say by, you know... 20th of, of July, this is going to be open blue ocean right here. And probably I wouldn't give this another week before it really starts breaking up. Um, you know, based on what I've seen over here, with if you go back a week, you know, it looked, looked somewhat solid. This is starting to break up, but look at this. Looks somewhat solid. Bam, it really starts breaking up, um, even just within a week. Uh, and this sort of what you call a Polinia, I guess, is really, really getting quite large. Um, this is rivaling 2014 for the the size of the Laptev uh, intrusion into the, the Arctic basin here. Um, if you go back to 2014, yeah, see, it's about a, about the same level. And 2014 had nowhere near the the East Siberian Sea melt. So, I mean, could we see? Open water up at 85 north, you know, by the end of of 2017, like we did in 2014, coming out of the Laptev. I think there's a great chance of that. Um, yeah, it looks it looks pretty bad here in 2017. Whoop. There we go. Back to 2017. All right, if we kind of go on over, which by the way, I'm not really commenting on the, the land snowmelt anymore because 
that's pretty much caught up with all the other years, uh, with the exception of the Canadian Arctic Archipelago, which I'll I'll talk about here in just a second. But uh, everything else is caught up, so that's a moot point right now. You know, to whatever extent, uh, 2017 has lost melting momentum from that. Uh, it's pretty much equalized on that, and really the melt ponding has equalized too now. So. You know, we're talking about an equal playing field. You know, sea surface temperatures are quickly increasing. Um, the one place where sea surface temperatures are still lagging behind and, you know, probably going to be permanently um, a little bit lagging compared to some recent years is here in the in the North Atlantic and Kara Sea. Uh, that's going to be lagging, which is not going to impact the, the final melt extent too much because all this is going to melt out. In fact, I would, if I had to eyeball my prediction of, uh, you know, where the melt frontier is going to end up, I would almost be tempted to carve out like a line from, from about right here. All this stuff that's kind of, you know, rubble. You can see these flows are just rubble that aren't even really held together anymore. All, I can't imagine any of this surviving uh, the melt season, especially over here. Uh, this is all this is all a goner, I would say. And so if you, if you extrapolate the Laptev bite getting down about 85 north and then you just kind of shear off all this and assume that all this is going to melt out too, you're left with what I, you know, maybe there might be a slight little tongue or arm of, of some rubbly ice remaining, but pretty much all this, everything to the um, to the east of my mouse cursor here, to the right of my mouse cursor, is going to be a goner, I would say, by the end of this melt season. All right, you can already you can already tell uh, where that's going to end up. And then, by the way, if you look over here, I mean, the sky's the limit as far as the Pacific is concerned. Um, there's really um, who knows how far that will progress. I'll get to that in a second. But uh, So this Kara Sea, even though it's still lagging behind a little bit, uh, it will, you know, limit the amount of heat that can get into the Central Arctic Basin. That might delay that somewhat, but still I can't imagine all this rubbly stuff um, persisting. If we look at 2016, what did it look like, you know, Pretty similar. In fact, if you go kind of into the main pack, yeah, there's some rubbly stuff here, but uh, it wasn't really as much uh, over in this area. I'd say 2017 looks looks worse right there. Uh, so I'd say that's going to kind of balance out with the uh, the car sea being a bit uh, delayed, uh, which. Uh, you know, Greenland seas had a very vigorous melt lately. So let's go over real quick now to the Canadian Arctic Archipelago. And snow melt has really ramped up. And the melt ponding has really ramped up since last week. Right? If you remember how white all of this looked um, as of one week ago. Well, look at, look at here. Look at this. Look at this melt ponding. It's everywhere. In fact, some of it's being obscured by cloud, but I'm pretty sure this goes pretty much everything south of about here. Everything, the main passage southwards is all completely, I mean, look at that deep shade of blue. That's, that's soaking up a lot of, uh, a lot of the sun's rays here. And this is already starting to break up. You can see the cracks forming. Uh, and then this is starting to break up, which is actually quite ahead of uh, 2016. If we go to a clear day, see it's still still a little bit delayed, whereas we're quite advanced on 2017. Now 2017 is still behind 2016 and other years in terms of losing the snow cover in the very, very high Arctic here in upper Nunavut, everything north of the of the main Northwest Passage, and uh, the melt ponding isn't quite as pronounced yet. Although, look at here, this in a matter of days, this changed. Went from last week pure white 
to just a week later. Look at that. Uh, you know, similar thing in a lot of other places. So melt ponding is starting to ramp up and catch up with other years. Uh, land snow cover is still a little bit uh, behind, but uh, seems to be quickly catching up. You see these islands are pretty much, the snow is melted out now. Uh, so, you know, Northwest Passage doesn't look, it might be a few days behind uh, 2016. You know, you got probably a few days ahead right here, maybe a few days behind as far as the main passage is concerned, a few days behind of the, the snow melt over here, but I can't see it ending up all that differently from 2016. Um, so, you know, it doesn't look good really as far as the melt goes. Now let's look at Beaufort now, because this is, and Chukchi, this has seen some major uh, acceleration this past week, uh, both in just the the extent of the front the ice frontier. If we go back to the 19th. You can see each day how quickly is venting, especially these last few days when we've had this kind of uh, southwesterly wind coming in. See, you just see jumps about from here to, you know, jumps about the width of my mouse cursor in one day uh, from that southwest uh, wind. And if you look at the, the color of the ice, one week ago, look, still looked pretty bright white, uh, but within a couple of days, still looked pretty bright white as of the 22nd. But you see the 23rd melt ponding down here. Boom, 24th. Look at that melt ponding. Uh, those southwesterly warm winds are doing a number. Now the melt ponding, you can see kind of bluish tones that are in rubbly appearance that's advancing way into the Beaufort. So, you know, Beaufort doesn't, if I had to eyeball the eventual extent, you know, I can't see anything, anything west of here or anything south of here surviving to the left of my mouse cursor, you know. So if you add that to what, you know, it looks like on the, on the eastern Atlantic side, you know, we might be left with an intact core of about 2.5 million square kilometers. I mean, eh, I don't know if it's going to be tough to to get down to like, let's say, 2 million, you know, challenge 2012. I don't think this is quite the year for that, um, you know, because this, this central, very central area still looks pretty intact, pretty white. I know it's not the thickest. Uh, that it's been, but I do think it'll survive. But we're definitely down into a bottom three, maybe even bottom two uh, scenario for uh, ice extent and area. Uh, this might even beat 2016. Uh, it might might give 2012 a, a run for its money, but I'm not. I wouldn't go so far as to bet on that. I would, if you had to, you know, press me for uh, for an estimate right now. I'd say. 2.5 million square kilometers for cryosphere today area measurement um, or whatever the equivalent of that is nowadays since I don't know if CT is even uh, that metric is even still being tracked but uh, so you know if, if this year had had a more aggressive snow melt out we really could have been looking at a you know, one million kilometer, just a tiny little core of ice left over. It could have been really bad. Uh, and if you think, if the, if we could get to a state of ice like this, about, I'd say, maybe three weeks earlier. You know, if we were, if this was like the first week of June and we were talking about this. And I have no doubt that in that sort of year, we would get a complete melt out of the ice. You know, that's all it takes really at this point to um, to put us over the edge. But I don't think it's quite this year. We're not quite there yet. But, uh, you know, if the ingredients had come together to give us some more aggressive snow melt out on land, 
uh, earlier. We might have been talking about that, but even as it is, I think we're talking about a bottom, bottom two, um, you know, sea ice uh, area and extent for the end of this year. Uh, that's just my, you know, just what I see with my eyes, and of course the the numbers are are following in line with that. Um, you know, 2017 is is still very stubbornly hanging in there with the with the top three melt years. So, uh, you know, I expect that to continue to be the case uh, based on especially how quickly some of this stuff has been disintegrating over the last week, you know, going from seemingly from solid white to melt ponding, but still solid, and then to just complete breakup and rubble. Uh, it's really astonishing how quickly that seems to be progressing this year. So with that, uh, I'd have to predict um, somewhere in between 2012 and 2016 for the end of, uh, of the year melt out, right? So uh, we, I'll continue to track this probably each week uh, into this melt season with Worldview. And um, I'll see you then next time.